I made a piece and I wanted to center the like creative energy around the parameters of grain and formant. Uh, it's in the context of voice modeling, so OM Shant. And uh, I'll just play the piece and then talk more about it. And you'll see the uh, score that I made for it while I play it. So uh, here we go. So, oh, yes. Um, this is this is the another way to view it. Uh, other than the score, is the the sonogram, and you can see that uh, it's kind of a piece that's about stretching and contraction. You can see it, 
just the way the lines are that sometimes the lines they they're all kind of the same motion but it's almost as if you sort of just like squished it or you stretched it out and then even like very very much stretched it out like you can see in the end uh, the more the piece stretches the more that the frequencies and the pitch actually kind of like uh, stutters apart into a kind of percussive texture. You can also see that it's a piece kind of form, it, the form is organized around these sudden cuts. There's not really any sort of fading. Uh, there's gradual changes, but the gradual changes, they, they begin, they end, and then it moves to something else. So I'll, I'll talk about how I made the piece. Uh, and like the two things I want to talk about are how I made the sound and specifically what parts of the sound that I thought were like Im needed to be controlled and what parts I kind of left at random or not controlled. And it leads to the second part, which is the text score I created and why I chose to use a text score to create this piece. The genesis of the piece was to use the uh, OM Shant synthesis library technique tool um, to really exploit the grains and the formats of, of that synthesizer. Um, I love how it's, it's just like this huge sound, these like singular grains. Uh, they just feel very loud, especially in the headphones. Um, I like that it is kind of simultaneously a percussive and a melodic um, unit of sound. And especially the way the formants shift, it, it not only has like this level of, of like being harmony, almost like a chorale is shifting, but it's also as the formants shift, it really, it almost acts like a volume control or a dynamic push for the percussive aspects. You could hear towards the end as it was doing these very periodic stutters when you heard the format change, it really would push itself out into a different space or pull itself in. Um, overall, it's like when people have a vocal fry or like when the people in the movie trailers go like, this summer, th this, and, the, and I just love the very beginning when they're like, this summer, and I just want that beginning fry, those beginning grains to last the whole time. But what is the piece actually? It's the actual synthesis is happening on three levels. The first level is on the level of voices. I'm making uh, singular, like monophonic uh, phrases through Om Shant. And, um, and I make multiple and they get stacked on top of each other to make like a, a polyphony of Om Shant. And you can see that where I have voice one, voice two, voice three, and they come together to make what is measure 33. There's a, uh, is like measure 33, 34, 30. there's 36 measures in the whole piece. And that's, yeah, the second layer is the three voices stacked on top of each other to create this specific kind of polyphony. And then the most outer layer is just that they've been sequenced one after another. To help you hear that, I'll play through, this is also measure 33. And these are the, I'll play voice one, voice two, voice three, this is, what voice one sounds like. This is voice two. This is voice three. So what's interesting about the way these all stack together is that the formats are the same. They're, they're all shifting to the same format in the same amount of time. And what differs is the 
frequency of the voice, which we don't even hear as a frequency here. We just actually hear it as like the stuttering. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. And when it's all stacked on top of each other, uh, then it sounds like this. So you get a very clear formantic gesture um, while having a kind of complex, maybe you could call it polyrhythmic in a way, although it, it doesn't really sound like a polyrhythm, it just sounds like things are all mashed together on top of each other. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like if three people were walking together, but they're like walking like inside of each other, but they were walking at different speeds because they had different uh, leg lengths. Anyways, I'll go through now how the patching kind of looks. And this is this was all the sounds were made in a single patch that just had like loops within loops within loops. You can sort of see the different boxes as different loops that the text file went into. I'll start explaining the whole structure, starting from the most inside, the most inner part, the part that you connect most easily to what you hear sonically. So that's the, um, the, just your basic chant setup that you have a, a frequency and then you, a fundamental frequency, and then you have the filter. And there we have my two different things that I'm interested in, the formats coming in and changing, and then you have the, the frequency, which is the speed of the stuttering. Um, the speed of the stuttering is a simple, random walk. It's simple in that it has five steps. It's not like this crazy jittering thing. It has relatively simple, um, yeah, movement when you slow it down and you can, s oh no, you can't, you, I was going to say you can see it by the undulating, but you see it, you actually don't see it because it's always interpolating the speed. But anyways, the frequency is between two and 25, like the very lowest we can perceive a pitch is I don't know, it's like 40 or 20 or it's like, so it's, it's below the threshold at which we perceive frequencies as defined pitches. It's always in this realm of rhythm, but then of course you stack three of them on top of each other and you're hearing more than 20 things per second. Um, but it's random. I don't control for any measure. I don't choose whether it ends up being slow or fast. This was a deliberate choice to not focus on pitch or rhythm, but to focus on grain and formant um, to go back to the title of, of the piece that it's focused around grains and formant control. I, I, I'm pretty stoked about this part. It's the, it's the formant libraries uh, where when you heard these stark shifts in texture um, that you heard, yeah, well, you heard these stark shifts in texture that it would sound perhaps in a certain frequency in the beginning and then there was a sudden shift where it seemed like the timbre of everything, the frequency range of everything shifted while it was still maintaining this busy jitteringness. And that's because the speed of the grain, the, the speed of the measures were all staying the same, but what would change is which formats would be called from. Uh, and I came up with basically there's, there's four, five different options, but I'll say there's two and a half options. Basically, I, I collected all the formants and I looked at them and I sorted them by a certain kind of, I don't know, like what they sounded like to me as like, these sound like high formants. Maybe they, they're just more rich in the higher frequency spectrum. Um, but, and then I collected all the ones that sounded really low to me. Again, it's not, they all have different frequency bands that go all across the spectrum, but I just found that certain ones sounded high to me, and thus I thought they were wacky, and others that sounded low. Um, and then the sort of three off to the side are just having, picking two formants that I just wanted to stick to those two, or stick to those three, or stick to those four, and, and this is where the starkest timbral change comes from, that I'm gonna walk over here. Um, that here, in these, 
right here, you see these very defined spaces, and it's because it's calling upon this format library, where it's only calling upon these two. And even though it calls on it random, I'll call maybe like 100 format shifts in a second. It'll just be oscillating between those two, and it creates almost like a, a chord in a way, or like this meta format. But then when I go to wacky formats over here, it's 15 different ones. So it just, it's kind of like all over the place. And you get this all over the place sound that doesn't really sound like a chord, but more like this strange noise. Yeah, this is it coming together. You can see my random walk going into the fundamental frequency and the format list that I called from over here is going into my, uh, this thing I have here called vowel cycling, which is just to make it interpolate um, Yep. I'll come back to it later, but you can notice that I have, it's already at the voice level, it's saving everything as a specific file name. I, it was important to me that everything can be accounted for because I was pulling very random sounds or the, the random walks were quite random, the formats are random. So I wanted to make sure if there was something very specific that I liked, I could call back to it and look at specifically what happened. So yeah. Outside of that, it's you have it creating these, um, that synthesis process will happen, and then I'll want it to happen two more times or three more times, like I showed you with that measure 33 from earlier. We had those three voices that had the same formantic signature, but different frequencies. That would mean that I would ask, I would ask the patch to run, it would run this three times and then you'd get your three distinct ones. So it would have three different random walks, but it would call on the same formantic libraries for all of them. You can see here also another foreshadow. Yeah, once again, I save it, because uh, I wanted to save not only the individual sounds, but the, the me each measure. And you can begin to see here, this is where my text score, my parentheses with various uh, numbers, it gets parsed here where in my text score that I'll show you later, uh, the first value <clears throat> the first value is always representing how many voices do I want to happen at once. The second value is always saying how many, uh, how many formant, how many shifts in format do I want. The third is how long is the overall measure. And the fourth is which, which of the formant libraries am I pulling from. Um, I'll go quickly through this. They just get all sequenced together one after another in the end. I could do it, uh, it's the same as if I just lined them up in GarageBand, but you, I ended up with 34 separate audio files, so I just wanted it to do it all for me. Um, and having some fade-ins and fade-outs, you can see at the bottom of my patch, I'm cutting out the very beginning and I'm fading in each one. It helped me to prevent some clicks. Uh, inevitably, when you have like, all these grains happening, if they all happen to line up right on each other, there's a click. What can you do about it? Um, and this, this, this is now we are exiting. I just talked a bunch about the sound you heard, but now we're reaching the area of like the numbers, the data behind the sound. Um, you can see my text file would be imported at the top, where it says import text scores here. Uh, and then it would run through these two loops are what I just spent uh, the past few minutes explaining to you. And then not only would it save a sound, but it would also save a text file of it. Because sometimes I found that I would make a text file and then I would run it, my text file would come then I would like listen to it and I would think, oh, actually I just want that like one part to be different. Like I want measure 33 to be different. Um, and I would look through uh, all the individual sounds I saved and then I would just go here, edit one cell and run the whole thing again and then it would make a new text file down here um, so that I could continue to sort of recursively edit and tweak um, my piece and my score. Uh, so that's the, this is the score. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit out of order. 
just because I was already started explaining it. I'll explain to you specifically how a single cell uh, is sort of dis parsed out in the score. Um, so this one, three, seven, 15, zero, that's the one. That's, oh, I guess I have a lot more than 33 measures. That's the 33rd measure. So I guess we have hundreds of measures. Um, so three voices, seven formantic shifts over the course of 15 seconds, and it's calling on formantic library zero. And you can look here, you can see that we have a format here, and anytime we see an apex or a, a turn, an inflection point in the, uh, in the, in the formants, this is where it reaches one format and goes to the next. And why did I why why do I like using these text scores? I like this idea. I think ever since I started this course, I'm really interested in the idea of controlling large amounts of sound really, really easily or with like minimal amounts of change. And I originally did this by using BPFs and like I would draw a BPF and it would just make music that like looked like my BPF. And this was great for controlling these large sweeping gestures, but it wasn't very, it was a little limited at controlling specific events. Uh, if I wanted like a really specific inflection or timing or rhythm, I found that using text in this way was more helpful for that. Um, and I wanted the text to be encased by a temporal unit, meaning that, uh, that each set, each number set, represents a measure in time. That way it'd be really easy for me to read through things um, because ultimately it all gets separated out and you have a list of voices, you have a list of format changes, you have a list of durations, and then it, it becomes too difficult to sort of track along and read like a score. Um, you can even see how I've separated things out uh, like an example is, these are all shifting really, really quickly. I knew I just wanted the formats to change so very quickly. Um, so I just kind of encased it all here and then put a little space. And that's a helpful way for me to read my own score. Or I can sort of assume that wherever I put a break, it means that there's some sort of change happening here, such as we're calling upon the same set of formats for the whole piece until here. I would put a space here because I'm like, this is a big moment. This is important in my piece that it happens right there. Um, it saves everything. So it, I, it's uh, not very efficient for uh, my hard drive, but it was very efficient for me to find specific things. And this is what uh, I got really excited about because so often, I feel like I would create something and it would be like 90% really, really good. And then there'd just be like two seconds in this maybe 90 second thing where I'm like, that, that just doesn't sound so great. And I just kind of try to like push my way through it as a listener because the rest is so good and I don't want to resynthesize the whole thing. Uh, I don't have to do that anymore because I can say like, oh, those two seconds I don't like, that's vocal fry 0601 part two 100.aiff and I'll find the 100th line in my text file and change it. Uh, and that's that. Uh, these, I'll just go through a set of quick reflections. I've explained everything in my piece, but kind of things that I would want to change. Um, I thought a lot about Evelina's uh, composition for her presentation that was kind of structured around these proportions that were, that dictated the form of the piece. And I thought that was quite striking. And it's something that I would probably want to use more. I, I didn't use any governing serial practice to make the text score. I just kind of started typing numbers how I liked. Um, but uh, I think that has its limits to wanting, if I wanted to create something a little bit more long form, uh, it's easy to get lost in the specific gestures. I think obviously, the spatialization would help a lot in a lot of ways. That's just something I didn't get to uh, when I made this. It's all a mono file right now. So yeah, mono gang. Um, 
Look, I cited my own self in my reflections. Uh, I used I used this actually in my uh, Webstadt Festival piece, the one where the uh, the my video recordings are jittering and changing at rapid movements. This was also done through this text score kind of approach. So I'm happy I came up with the text score thing because it is something that I feel is applicable, not just to Om Shant, but just sort of any, not any, but many different ways of controlling uh, music or form on an algorithmic level. So, yep. This this is it. That's that's the end with this nice graphic. And um oh, do I have some Yeah, that's just the piece. But um <laughs> That's it. Yeah, thanks.